Okay. Y'all, welcome back to the vlog. So, yes, y'all, we finna get into a whole... I guess it's a reaction. I'm gonna call it a reaction. It's a reaction video to the sit down that Keisha Anderson and Jeremy Postel or Jeremy, how do you, how do you say his name? Shanita, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. How you say your little brother name? Um, that um, Keisha and Jeremy um, had in regards to the book, y'all. So let's just get into it because it's just so much. Like it's so much, is it? But not really. Okay, so let me just first say that a lot of y'all did not read the book. And I know y'all did not read the book because I can just tell by the comments. I can tell by the comments on her videos. I can tell by the comments on my videos that y'all did not read the book. So let's just go a little bit into the book. It was a lot of, it. both of them wrote the book. They each had their own segment. The first chapter of the book, um, Keisha briefly goes over um, that uh, something real unfortunate happened in her childhood, which I'll bring back up in this um in this little reaction but she does go over that she suffered from some form of molestation um she doesn't go too much into detail about the molestation that she um that happened to her in her childhood i'm assuming that this happened somewhere um she says in her adolescence y'all she <laughs> in her adolescence so um i'm assuming this happened anywhere between um uh, infants um uh, between the ages of 14 into um her infancy i'm not sure she doesn't get into um the whole details of what happened what age it, it happened at and who did it she also um says that she was in a relationship with a female a lot of y'all mentioned oh she's she was gay yes she was dating women um in the book she says that she was kind of forced into that that's not something that she wanted which i don't understand i don't buy that um nobody's gonna force me to be gay i i like men i know i like men i'm not just about to start dating a woman because a woman is pressuring me to be my girlfriend so um that right there sets the tone for the book um the first chapter it sets the tone that we know that she is weak-minded she's a she's someone that um uh couldn't did not make a decision of her well she did make a decision you made a decision to be with a woman whether it was pressured on you or not you know that that's somebody that i would classify as having a weak mind so um and we're still friends for y'all that's mad that said we're still friends i'm clearly not the friend that's going to go along to get along i'm going to say what i have to say and we you can go be mad about it and you come talk to me about it and we still gonna be friends if you can forgive Jeremy for all he did, you're going to forgive me. So, um, moving right along. Anyways, anybody else that has something to say about it, girl, fuck you. Okay, period. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, she says that she was forced into being gay. So, she was with this. Um, and then in another part of the book, she says that um, no one... She kind of uses the stigma that the black community does not like the LGBT community. They're not accepting of it or they weren't as accepting of it as before when she was doing this. They weren't accepting. So she kind of tried to pull on those strings of, of the Christians, you know, to get those people to go along with her. If y'all read the book, if you know, you know. She did try to, I was like, don't be trying to bring these Christians into it and try to, um, you know, play victim and use them as you know because she did baptize away the gayness like i kind of stopped watching her a little bit after she said she went and got baptized and she's no longer gay but um anyways she said she was pushed into being uh dating women i was like oh okay and she there's one part in the book y'all where i say she's weak-minded because she said she was being abused by one of the women that she was in a relationship with and she said she had told uh, one of the girl, the girlfriend that she was being abused by. She went and told her, um, she would have told her friend, like, tell your friend to stop hitting me. <laughs> and she said the girl's friend just looked at her like, or the girl's teammate just looked at her like, what? And didn't do anything about it. And I was like, yeah, because y'all are both adults at this point. Y'all were in university. And why are you telling another grown woman? Like, I mean, I'm not saying that the teammate was right to ignore her or turn the cheek, but like, you 
girl, you get, if you don't go somewhere, like, why are you whispering? She was like, I whispered into her ear, tell your friend to stop hitting me. Like, if you don't get your little ass out of here, <laughs> Keisha, why you ain't gonna get some help? But, um, yeah, y'all, that's what happened. And then Jeremy says in his part, this is, this is, they're giving the reasons of why they are at where they're at now which makes sense if y'all read the book because someone asked me like are you gonna comment what needs what they need to address in the sit down no i didn't comment because what was said in the book was all that needed to be said she's saying in the book that she has not healed from the things that happened to her in the past she keeps saying that her upbringing was crazy even in the sit down she said um you know my my i see my parents go through a lot of things when when they asked her do you think that you're a good mom for um staying with jeremy she was like i see my family go through some crazy things she never gets into the crazy things that her family has gone through but she does keep saying that y'all keep on missing a lot of people miss this too and when they did the recap of the book y'all didn't get into the part that she said she was molested y'all didn't get into the part where she was living with her girlfriend um i think she was living with nasia or nigel whatever that girl's name is even before she graduated high school there was something going on in her home y'all that she is not discussing that she's not disclosing to us so y'all everybody is missing that part that this is a broken girl something um and i don't know she keeps saying i'm going to counseling what counseling are you going to that is um is not even the counseling i can't even blame the counseling because if anybody knows that when you go to counseling counselors and therapists don't tell you what you should do they they bring up scenarios they they give you steps to help bring you to the water it's up to you to drink it and she's clearly not drinking it okay she's not learning anything i don't know if you girl where, where are you getting these therapists from i hope you ain't getting a therapist from that mall from greenbrier mall honey you got to go get a therapist somewhere else because it's not working all this couples therapies and all that you're going to but um she is stuck in that i don't know if it's from the molestation that she's stuck in that mind frame because you have to if you really look at her and really watch her which now i've taken a, a closer look at things after this book it has gotten me to take a closer look at things and i'm starting to realize that her mind state is in a retarded state not retarded as in slow y'all i'm saying it's is frozen in that state um where maybe that molestation ha happened so she at this point keisha needs to step back from everything that she's doing step back from the relationship with jeremy and trying to fix that relationship and heal the relationship with herself she's gonna have to go back to that younger version of herself and say listen this is the older keisha now i'm here for you i know this happened i know somebody wasn't there to protect you but i'm here to protect you now i'm sorry that that happened this is not going to happen to you anymore and she needs to um move on and become the woman that she is destined to be and that's just what needs to happen um and, th and that's what i'm seeing y'all if y'all i know y'all probably y'all wanted me to come on here and drag her but um there's there's everybody else is doing that and what everybody is forgetting is that um or not paying attention to and not speaking on because we're kind of upset we're in our feelings that jeremy cheated on her is that she needs to heal that part of herself she needs to heal from her past from her upbringing and that is going to be needed in order for her to be a good mom because i feel like she thinks that she is a good mom because she is not raising her children the way that her mom or her family raised her which what she doesn't know is that she's basically is and it's out of her control is you know it, the history is repeating itself even though you feel like you're not um repeating it it, it kind of is you know you, you i don't know the specifics of your childhood but um you know you're you're in a relationship and stop i wish you would quit girlfriend stop saying your boyfriend that's your baby daddy now okay that is not your boyfriend that's your baby daddy and i know you just want to not use that term but baby it is what it is that's your baby daddy that's your baby dad's three times over okay so um that's that's just um it is what it is you're you're repeating a pattern and if you don't um friend if you don't look within yourself and get that healing that you need within yourself then this is going to the, pa the pattern is going to uh, repeat itself and um I don't know that this relationship will last y'all I don't know that it's going to survive her having to step away because Jeremy he already had an excuse of why he cheated the first time and she had the placenta previous she couldn't be having sex 
why she was pregnant with the twins and he stepped out that was his excuse what is going to be his excuse this time when you need to step away and heal and become the woman that you need to be for yourself first and then for those children what is going to be his excuse because there's no room for him when it's going to come to the time to um fix who you are and fix those things that happened in your past because nobody can do that for you uh, at this time you're gonna have to do it for yourself so in Jeremy's part of the book, Jeremy says that in, this is this is gonna help y'all understand that he is a fuckboy, like I said. Okay, um, he says that he was in college. You know, this, he's talking about his ex. And then in the sit down, Jeremy says, "I don't really subscribe to that." He said, "She said, boy, what is you talking about? You wrote a whole he said, she said book. That's how the book was formatted. She said this." He said that. Next chapter, she said this. He said that. So in the in the book, he says, <laughs> Jeremy says that um, he was dating a girl, his ex, one of his exes. He was dating her. She was everything. She was the bomb. She even uh, gave him his gave him her car, and he would drive so she so he can get to college. So he was all the way out of state with this girl's car. She lived in Georgia. Y'all know if you live in Georgia, you need a car. I mean, they have a bus system, but you're better off with a car, okay? A car is very good to have. So what he says is that he um, took this girl's car. She let him use it. He took the girl's car and was driving back and forth, talking about, oh, the sex was good. I was driving seven hours to come back every weekend to be with her. She was walking to work or catching the bus to work, but she loved me so much she gave me her car. No, she was she was foolish enough to let you, a fuckboy, be driving her car and doing whatever and then he ends up saying he was cheating on the girl too talking about sooner or later those seven hour drives became too long when i had girls right here on campus but like boy what so this girl gave you her car while she walked to work and you just uh took her car and was cheating on her okay but you loved her okay okay y'all yes it was said in the book he said he used this girl's car and still cheated on her so i don't know why y'all are surprised that he doing this to keisha okay and he also in the book he says that the women that the woman that he would marry is most likely the woman is not the likely to be the woman that he's sexually attracted to so i guess that's also his reasoning for stepping out on keisha he says keisha is a smart business woman but ultimately he's not sexually attracted to her so i'm pretty sure this y'all that that's what was said i i don't want to i don't hey, listen i'm not going to say what that's it that's what was said okay and then um so he cheats on this girl well, after he been driving her car and she you know been going walking back and forth to work like classic fuckboy stuff like girl why you get him his yo he drive walk, driving around in your car cheating on you like ugh it's just ridiculous and then jeremy goes into how he was raised and he basically says yeah he went back and forth first he said he was raised right by his mom and his stepdad then he says you know his dad wasn't there and and then he says his his environment is the reason why he is the way he's he the reason he is the way he is okay mr campbellton wrote what was his instagram handle y'all before it was splashed the dime so in the sit down, Jeremy says that he, his credentials are enough to carry his weight in the relationship. And I'm just like, what credentials? Because in the book, you said everybody was mad that you got with Keisha and felt like Keisha was taking care of you. But you, you said, what did he say? He was like, how was I supposed to, I was just getting out of college. I just missed out on a basketball opportunity. How was I supposed to be coming home with a house and a car? What did y'all expect me to have? Okay, so he says in the book that he didn't have anything. So what did y'all expect for him to do? I was like, oh, well, I mean, I guess. And then um, he says, it, and then in that same token, he says he didn't have anything, but best believe that he was going to pay Keisha's rent when they got together, when she first moved him in. I was like, well, how are you going to pay the rent if you ain't have anything? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, either you didn't have anything and she was taking care of you, or you did have it. He said he didn't have anything. So I, I don't, I don't, it's a lot of he said, she said, okay? It's a lot of going back and forth. And that's the contradictory that everyone is talking about when they say that the book, they were contradicting themselves in the book. That's what it is that they were talking about. Okay, y'all. And then, so if y'all, 
Now, Jeremy, if y'all would have read the book, you would understand my disgust for him. Okay, so in the book, he says that women are gullible. And if, if a nigga show you the slightest amount of attention, y'all gonna be all over him. Y'all gonna want to give him everything. And he says that that's what Keisha did, basically. He said that she is the one that told him he didn't have to pay for anything. So y'all mad that he is getting all this treatment. She's the one that encourages him to not work and to not have to take care of anything and that she was going to take care of everything that she knew what it was from the jump he says it right there in the book so if y'all mad that keisha decided to stay because in the book keisha says that she's staying with him and y'all just want her to leave him hold on y'all it looked crooked Anyway, she says that we just want him to leave him because we want him. And I'm just like, girl, we do not want him. But if that's what makes you feel, if that's the justification that you need to make yourself feel better, then so be it. But Jeremy says in the book that y'all, he said that y'all women are gullible, that y'all will do anything just to have a dude. If he shows y'all the slightest amount of attention, y'all going for it. And that's the reason why he did what he did. He said some of this, y'all got to take the blame for some of this because most of it is your fault. He says this in the book, y'all. Y'all did not read the book because if you had read the book, you would have been just as disgusted by him as I was. And I'm not even all the way disgusted by him because in the book, he says that they weren't in a relationship. They were just fucking around, okay? So, and she decided to go ahead and move him into her place. So, she decided to be committed to him when he wasn't committed to her. It's only been about three years. What I say before? 36 months they've been together about. The, the twins are going on two. They about 20 months. And then they got the new baby. So, their whole relationship, she basically moved him in, got pregnant by him, ended up having a miscarriage, okay? Then five months later, got pregnant with the twins. Y'all do the math. She moved him in, had sex with him right away, unprotected. So, girl, you went ahead and moved him in and had unprotected sex with him. What makes you think that baby wasn't his, running to go render a DNA test? But, um, yeah, y'all. So, I can't, I don't feel no type of way about this um, dragging him in that last video, him or her. Like, girl, you did what you did. Just say that you did what you did. Okay, and he didn't, I'm going to, I don't want to say that he didn't owe you being faithful to you because he seen that and he knew in his mind that he knew from the way he put in that book, he knew that you were expecting for him to be faithful to you, to have some type of loyalty to you. He knew that. And maybe he did tell you that he didn't want to be with you or maybe he did tell you that this is not what it is and you just ignored that and tried to push push him into being that 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 person because Shanita did say that's what was going on and maybe you left that part out of the book but Jeremy was completely honest in his part of the book I will say that he did say that he he was being who he is and um you didn't want to realize that you failed to realize that you wanted to, you wanted some something else other than what he was trying to give and now Jeremy is in a position where he can't say too much about that whole situation because she is now the mother of three of his kids he don't want to go there with it and embarrass his baby mama like that but maybe he might want to say that he really didn't want to be with her that it, it didn't got too far and they was being reckless and now they got three kids together ma'am nobody asked you stay out of grown folks business but um yeah and all y'all little kids in my comments stay out of grown folks business talking about you a grown woman yes you you damn right you damn right now now go somewhere now stay out of grown folk business okay but um yeah so carry on but yeah y'all she she basically met this dude she and gave him her all they weren't even together y'all she in the book she says that she decided to give be solely committed to jeremy but jeremy was dating other people mind you they've only been together for about three years y'all it's, on, it's been less than maybe less than 36 months and I want to hear that we knew each other from high school I know people from high school too I know people from high school I knew they was around and I don't know them know them y'all didn't know each other just stop it Jeremy talking about I didn't I didn't know what she had yes you did you went on this girl's Instagram you seen that she what she was doing you went on her YouTube you seen what was going on you just like your sister said in the words of T.I. you saw a sucker and you licked it 
period. So that's what happened. He came to Atlanta, spent all his time with her. She liked him, ended up moving him in. She ain't never had no dick like this before. She even said in the book, like, a woman never sexually satisfied her the way that a man can. And I, I can relate. Like, I've never been with a woman, but I... Is I like men. Like, ain't no woman about to do me like a man can do me, period. And that's just that on that. And that's when she finally got some of that, some of that, she she sprung. She sprung off of it, okay? And in the book, she says that Jedediah, she called him JR in the book, y'all. But Jedediah, is that his name? Jedediah, the dude, the military dude? When he, she said, oh, he lied and said I tried to have sex with him within three days of knowing him. I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you did, sis. Just come on and tell the truth. But tell the truth. Whatever is, whatever your truth is, go ahead on and own it. I don't care. Like I, I don't care. I'ma still say what I got to say, regardless. I still, but I'm still, I still love you. I don't care. If you tried to smash within three days, I don't care. Y'all watch Aaliyah J. Aaliyah J. says she smashed her dude on the first night, and they still together. I don't care. Do you boo? We grown. Okay, just use a condom. <laughs> but um. Yes, yeah, I think she has tried to have sex with that dude the third day of meeting him because shortly after that she got right with um Jeremy. She moved him into her place, started taking care of him. Everybody knows what was going on. So your life is on YouTube. We all seen it. You moved him in and started taking care of him, okay? And the new intro is still trash. Let me just say that. The new intro is trash. And then did y'all <laughs> Girl, quit putting his music into the video. I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to be watching any more of the vlogs. I don't know. I, I probably will on and off the way that I was before anyway. Um, but when she had that daggone um, music playing while she was on the freeway, had his music playing, I almost threw up in my mouth. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And then people was in the comments like, oh, I love the music. I was like, oh, really? Well, then y'all need to buy my baby daddy mixtape. Somebody buy my baby daddy mixtape the fuck y'all thought that was good rapping y'all y'all supporting that support my baby daddy because my baby needs some shoes okay my baby needs some shoes <laughs> but yeah y'all she tried to she had sex with she tried to have sex with Jedediah. i believe that she i know you did girl just stop it and um uh, but yeah she in the book she tries to like say no i didn't and she she's really playing the victim She's trying to play that victim card so hard in this book. And it's just like, stop it. Like, go get the help that you really need. Let this boy go. Like, you were sprung off this boy. He introduced you to something you ain't never had, you know. And you're just not it, sweetie. It's not going to work. And the longer you drag it out, the longer he keeps re-gifting you necklaces, because that necklace that he gave her in that vlog is the same necklace that he gave her when they found out at the gender reveal for little baby jury, jury, jury. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it, y'all. I did not like that name. I, I did, I don't. Jury. What is that? I didn't, I didn't like it. I don't like it. I still don't like it. But um, that's that's you do you, sweetheart. The baby's beautiful. I just the name is just like, ugh. But um. Yeah, y'all. It's she. She gotta get. J Jeremy is gonna be who he is, and um, she needs to get the help that she needs. And um, I don't know why with this book. And then she said the book wasn't rushed. How was the book not rushed when y'all just found out that that's his baby? And then she said, she said when the when the DNA test was rendered, like rendered what? <laughs> When it was rendered, like, what did you need a DNA test for? Like, he wasn't sleeping around. You thought that wasn't his baby? Girl. <sighs> I'm glad he did get a DNA test. And y'all can quit saying that Jeremy doesn't work because if y'all read the book, y'all would have seen in the copyright that the copyright was in Jeremy and Keisha LLC. Y'all, they in business together. Let's just hope y'all know that they're in business together. I was like, that is so uncreative. It had to be Jeremy and or Keisha and Jeremy. It's Keisha's names first. Keisha and Jeremy LLC. I was like, wow, how creative is that? <laughs> and that's probably why she has her channel name under Jer uh, Keisha and Jeremy. Um, but yeah, y'all. It's a whole mess. And it's it's a whole mess. It's gonna it's gonna unravel. 
But that whole sit down, she didn't answer any of the questions that needed to be answered. I want to know when are you going to get some counseling um, to overcome your past. Um, and and that's basically where it all needs to start. The rest of the stuff is trash. You're going to have to get rid of him because he's, he's not going to work out, you know. And y'all talking about where's the book money? It looked like they ain't got no book money. It seemed like y'all didn't, <laughs> didn't nobody read the book. But before I go, y'all, um, because I've been really drinking this wine today. Before I go, Shanita, what I want to know what was said, y'all. Shanita then came and left this comment here on my video, but then deleted it. Like, you don't seem like the type to throw a rock and hide your hands. So I want to know what was said. What, what did you feel like saying? And then um, I couldn't even read the whole comment because when I click on it, it, it doesn't show up. But it does show me that she left a comment. And it, baby, when you get lip fillers, they don't fill your lips with collagen. Let's just start there. But um, first thing first, baby, this shit is all real. All natural. This is all me, sweetheart. Okay? I don't have them pencil lips like you and your brother and them. Okay? <laughs> This shit is all me, but I, I do want to know what was said. Did you want to talk? What 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 was what was said? Okay, but anyway, y'all, y'all uh, buy my baby daddy mixtape. I, I gotta go. Buy, buy 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 my baby daddy mixtape. Somebody please. I I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't, y'all. I'm out. <laughs>